Welcome to this 11 plus English comprehension masterclass. Today we're going through main and subordinate clauses. Now, main clauses, subordinate clauses sometimes sound quite complex and difficult, but actually, once explained properly, they are far more simple than they sound. So, by the end of this video, if you watch it all the way through to the end, you will understand main clauses, subordinate clauses perfectly. And more importantly, you'll be able to answer questions on main clauses and subordinate clauses correctly every single time within your exam. So if you're ready for that, then let's start this teaching. So if we want to ace our 11 plus English comprehension exams, then one of the concepts that we need to have a strong grasp of is the concept of commas, right? We need to understand commas. And we see commas all the time within English comprehension and even creative writing because commas help us do so much within sentences, right? We can use commas to change the meaning of a sentence. We can use commas to add extra information into sentences like a parenthesis. We can use commas to introduce speech, both direct and indirect speech. And there's so many more other functions that we need to understand for our exams. But in this teaching, we're going to go through one particular function of commas. And that function is we can use commas within sentences to separate clauses. We can use commas within sentences to separate clauses. So let's dig a bit deeper into this. What does this really mean? The first natural question would be, of course, what is a clause, right? What are these things that commas apparently help us to separate? Now that's not too hard because all a clause is, is a phrase that makes perfect sense on its own, okay? It makes complete and perfect sense on its own. And maybe this is best understood through examples. So we have two examples here. First one being, Julie went to the shops, a very basic phrase. That is a clause because we understand what's going on from that phrase alone. It makes perfect sense. Second example, same thing. Mohammed's favorite subject was maths. Both of these phrases are clauses. They make sense on their own. Okay, so great. Now we know what a clause is. Well, this is just level one understanding. And to really ace our 11 plus English comprehension exams, we need to go a bit deeper. So how do we go from level one to level two? Well, the way we do that is by not only understanding what a clause is, but actually also understanding the different types of clause. So let's go into the different types of clauses, what they mean, you know, what they are. So when it comes to clauses, we actually have two different types of clauses. We have the main clause. And secondly, we have the subordinate clause. Now, I know subordinate clause, big, scary word. You may not have heard it before, but don't worry. You understand the difference perfectly by the end of this teaching. So think back to when we talked about clauses and how we define clauses as being phrases that make perfect, complete sense on their own. Well, if we're being detailed and specific, this definition actually only applies to main clauses. Only main clauses make complete full sense on their own. And that's why we call main clauses independent. Right? We call them independent. They make complete sense on their own independently. However, what about subordinate clauses? Well, subordinate clauses don't make complete sense on their own. In fact, subordinate clauses depend on main clauses to make sense. So guess what we call subordinate clauses? Well, we call them dependent. Yes, dependent. Because they only make sense when they're attached to a main clause. So again, let's use our examples to clarify this a bit further. We had Julie went to the shops, but now we've expanded it. We have Julie went to the shops, 
comma, but could not find the sweets she was looking for. Which ones are main clause and which ones are subordinate clause? How are we going to work this out? Well, let's think about it based on our definitions. Which clause is independent, makes complete sense on its own, and which part of the sentence only makes sense when attached to the other one? Well, first bit, Julie went to the shops. Does that make sense on its own? I think it does. So that's our main clause. Whereas what about, but could not find the sweets she was looking for? You see, that part of the sentence only makes sense when we attach it to Julie going to the shops. So therefore, it's our subordinate clause. It does not make sense on its own, but it's dependent on our main clause of Julie going to the shops. Are you now seeing how this is coming together? Okay, let's look at our second example. After trying all of the subjects, comma, Mohammed's favorite subject was maths. Which clause is independent? Which clause is dependent? Well, our independent clause is Mohammed's favorite subject was maths. That's our main clause. Whereas our dependent clause is after trying all of the subjects. It does not make sense until we understand that Mohammed's favorite subject was maths. So that's the difference between main clauses and subordinate clauses. Think about which part is dependent on the other and which part makes complete sense on its own. So now that we have that foundational understanding of main clauses, subordinate clauses, let's bring this back full circle, back to commas and what we started with, the function of commas in separating clauses. So you see, when we say that commas can separate clauses, what we really mean is whether we have a main clause and then a subordinate clause, or we have a subordinate clause and then followed by that we have a main clause. No matter which order we have that in, we can separate these two clauses using a comma. That is the function of comma, commas in separating clauses. But I can already hear you saying, what about main clause and main clause? Can we use commas to separate two main clauses? Well, I'm glad you asked because we can't. When we have two main clauses, we cannot use a comma. Instead, we have to use a full stop. And using a comma between two main clauses is actually called a comma splice. And if you've gone through the ultimate guide, you understand all about these. But this is a very common mistake that we see among our new students, especially when going through creative writing, right? The comma splice, putting a comma between two main clauses. Whenever you have two main clauses, you have to separate them using a full stop. You can only use commas when separating a main clause and a subordinate clause. And of course, we don't need to consider the situation of two subordinate clauses because you need at least one main clause in every sentence for it to be valid. So that's the function of commas in separating clauses, main clauses and subordinate clauses. So now we understand this pretty well, but that's still just level two. Understanding main clauses, subordinate clauses, how we use commas to separate them. We need to go one step further. And that one step further is in being able to efficiently, quickly and accurately answer exam questions that draws upon this knowledge, right? So that's level three. And the way we do this is through a very simple test. And that test is called the full stop test. The full stop test. And let's see how that works. When it comes to commas, we already know that commas help us to separate the main clause from the subordinate clause. But what commas don't help us do is to identify which clause is which. And it's not always easy to do. So that's where the full stop test comes in. Because the full stop test assumes that both clauses are main clauses. And by doing that, usually the subordinate clause pops out at us straight away. 
So to do the full stop test, all we do is we go to the point of separation in the sentence, so where the pause should be, and we insert a full stop. Go to where the pause should be in the sentence and insert a full stop. Now just read both clauses normally, and the one that does not make sense will very quickly jump out as your subordinate clause. So, first clause, Julie went to the shops, full stop. Perfect sense. But could not find the sweets she was looking for. I mean, on its own, that doesn't really make sense. So we found our subordinate clause using the full stop test. Second example, after trying all of the subjects, full stop. Doesn't really make sense. Subordinate clause, we found it. Muhammad's favorite subject was maths. Makes perfect sense independently. That's our main clause. So let's see how the full stop test can help us to answer questions quickly, efficiently, accurately. Let's do it. So here we have to insert the correct punctuation, either a comma or a full stop in the right place. So this question is drawing upon our understanding of main clauses and subordinate clauses. Can we understand if we have a main clause and subordinate clause, or we have two main clauses? Are we going to fall into the trap of the comma splice? That's what the examiner wants to know through this question. So, part A. As the crowd watched, a flash of fire appeared from underneath the rocket. First step in the full stop test, find the point of separation within the sentence. Where should the pause be? Well, I think it's pretty clear that the pause should be after watched. So we're gonna put a full stop after watched. Now, read both clauses. Which one makes sense on its own? As the crowd watched, full stop. No way, does not make sense on its own. Whereas a flash of fire appeared from underneath the rocket does make sense on its own. So we found a subordinate clause and we found a main clause. So therefore, what punctuation do we use between a subordinate and main clause? Yes, we use a comma. So a comma is going to go right there. What about part B? She looked at her watch, it was 10 o'clock. First step, where should the pause or separation be? Well, right here, put a full stop. Read both clauses. She looked at her watch, full stop. That's great. It was 10 o'clock, full stop. That's also great. Therefore, we have two main clauses. We have two main clauses. And the full stop is the appropriate punctuation because a comma would be a comma splice. Part C, the moon was high in the sky. The stars twinkled in the darkness. Pause in the sentence is right here. After sky, read both. The moon was high in the sky. Full stop, great again. The stars twinkled in the darkness. Full stop, great again. Two main clauses, we need a full stop. Part D, climbing the steps to the rocket, the man held his breath in anticipation. Again, pause should be right there. At our full stop, read both clauses. Climbing the steps to the rocket, full stop. No way, that does not make sense on its own. It's not independent. It's our subordinate clause. The man held his breath in anticipation. That does make sense on its own, and therefore it's our main clause. And you see how easy it is to identify our main clause and subordinate clause when we use our full stop test. So therefore, we're not going to use a comma, um, a full stop here, but we're going to use a comma because we have a main and subordinate clause. So you can see how the full stop test is very helpful in identifying both main clauses and subordinate clauses. But you also see how it's important to have that foundational understanding of how main clauses and subordinate clauses work, how commas separate them, and to have that understanding before we use techniques such as the full stop test. And that is how it has to be for every single topic 
within 11 plus English comprehension and English comprehension in general, the foundational understanding must come first before we use and apply the techniques and methods.